let's do a breakdown of the health influencers who have the highest testosterone levels and the lowest testosterone levels. Now, one of the most important parts about this is going to be transparency. It's going to be able to trust who you're listening to because most of these people are going to be selling you supplements and products that are supposed to improve your fitness, improve your performance in the gym, improve your personal life and intimate life, as well as make you look and feel more like a man, are actually not in the best shape themselves when it comes to blood tests. And a lot of the guys who are touting this incredibly high total or free testosterone are usually adding something that they're sometimes transparent about, but sometimes maybe not so much. So let's call out some of these health experts. And I want to start with one that I think is actually doing a pretty good job. And this is Paul Saladino. Now, he's also known as Carnivore MD, but he has been very transparent with his blood test, showing his testosterone levels, but more specifically showing his incredibly elevated SHBG levels. And a big reason for this is because he's limited carbohydrates in his diet. And this limitation of carbohydrates is causing him to have this incredibly sky high SHBG, otherwise known as sex hormone binding globulin. And what this SHBG does is it binds to his free testosterone, which in turn will cause his free testosterone to decrease. And therefore his total T is pretty high, but his free testosterone is definitely suffering. And free T is the testosterone that you really see the most benefit from, that you can really feel, feel that vigor. Now he has reincorporated carbohydrates into his diet with things like fruits, and honey, and he's also supplemented with things like boron, but he still has a problem with incredibly elevated SHBG. I hope he's doing well now, but more recently, looking at his lab tests, he was very humble and spoke to Derek from More Plates, More Dates, who we will be talking about a lot in this video, and was able to go through his blood tests and prove that he is actually natural, and he's not taking exogenous hormones just to try and pretend that he has high testosterone, when in actuality, he's just injecting something into his butt two to four times a week. But Luckily for us, it is very unlikely that he is doing this. So Paul has about 903.9 nanograms per deciliter of total testosterone and 14.37 nanograms per deciliter of free testosterone. Now, a big reason for this huge difference in low free T is because he has an incredibly high sex hormone binding globulin of 97.5 nanomoles per liter. Okay, now that I mentioned Paul, he's probably one of the best guys we're going to be talking about in this video. These other guys I'm about to mention are actually hurting a lot of people with their information, with their products, and with their lack of transparency. Now, there's a few guys coming up that are very transparent with what they're using, and they're very upfront with their followers about what they're taking. But there are some other guys who are trying to sell these products, courses, supplements, and they're not actually improving themselves. Like maybe they have a good physique, they have a good figure. But when you actually look at the blood test, man, this is why I get so upset about these kind of guys, because they're hurting people and they're pretending to be something that they're not. And in turn, this lack of integrity is causing hundreds of thousands of men my age or even younger or older to get into things that aren't really going to be good for them. Wasting their money on useless supplements is the least of their worries. They're actually doing things that are going to cause way more harm than good. And this is why it affects me so much because I've seen it firsthand. I've seen people fall into the trap of these influencers. You always need to ask, what are these people actually taking? What are they actually doing? If they're selling a product or a course or a supplement, is their personal health experience actually going to be able to back it up? Or are they just someone who looks good, genetically gifted per se, but they're not actually transforming their own health. They're not actually transforming their testosterone levels. And we're going to get into that later in the video. Now, the first guy I want to talk about is Kino Body. You may have seen his ads. He's this playboy billionaire looking guy who has all these girls talking about his products. But the truth with this guy, Kino Body, is that his testosterone didn't really change much between the age 22 and 30. At 22, he was about 640 nanograms per deciliter. And at 30, he was about 605 nanograms per deciliter, which in hindsight, it's good that he didn't drop a lot, but he should have increased his testosterone in this time. And for a guy who's promoting and preaching alternative supplements and nutritional programs and physical fitness programs in order to optimize your health and lose weight, he's not really doing that himself. So take a look at that and make sure you're more aware of who you're listening to. Now, the next guy, this one, good luck in finding some results because I made a video about him recently talking about V-Shred. 
and comparing him to Derek for more plates, more dates. However, Derek for more plates, more dates, although he is on hormone replacement therapies, he is very open about his levels and he gets them tested regularly and then breaks them down on his YouTube channel. But V Shred, it is a lot harder to find his testosterone levels. And the sad part about this is that he is promoting testosterone supplements, but you have no idea what his testosterone transformation is. You have no idea if he was actually able to improve his own testosterone from these supplements or if he just took this and wants you to take it because he's selling it to you. In actuality, doesn't really have much effect on it. Now, the next guy is actually a pretty avid keto enthusiast. However, he also realized that there are some problems with this diet. And one of the biggest things that stood out for him was when he got his blood work done. Now, Thomas DeLauer found out that his total T was 381 nanograms per deciliter. This is the total T of a man in their 80s. And he's a man who takes care of himself, eats well, talks about diet, lifestyle, exercise, yet is struggling to keep a testosterone level that is below the age of an 80 year old man. And then his free tea is 8.5 picograms per milliliter. Now this guy is definitely natty from Derek's analysis. And I do care about this guy because he does provide a lot of good information for alternative foods that people can consume in order to avoid junk food and eating more healthy. But at the same time, it's kind of sad that his personal journey isn't really showing an improvement in his testosterone levels. Now he has said himself that he feels fine and he doesn't see a reason for him to have to do something to increase his testosterone levels, but having a free testosterone that is below the reference range at his age is just something that means there's probably something wrong. He could be overworking himself, could be his restrictive diet, but if you're going to follow this guy, make sure you're understanding what he's doing and what might happen to you if you decide to follow a restrictive diet like keto. Now, here's a story, more of a cautionary tale of an influencer, a very young guy who's very fit and is paid to do bodybuilding. His name's Alex Eubank, and he is a fitness influencer and his testosterone when he got tested was 215 nanograms per deciliter. Now this could be due to a whole plethora of things. It could be due to overtraining. It could be due to things he's already taken in the past, but he wants to hop on testosterone replacement therapy and he's transparent about it. But at the same time, at that age, having that low of a total testosterone level should be a huge red flag. And he's influencing all these young guys to go to the gym more, to lift weight, which is great, but his testosterone and his hormone panel is greatly struggling. And when you're in that situation where you can look up to someone, you want to make sure you're able to trust what they're saying. And in this case, you probably has been taking some extracurriculars in order to get that number so low. Because in a few people from now, we're going to mention someone who's hurt themselves even more by taking too much and then not being transparent about what they've actually taken. Now, this next guy is actually one of my favorites. I love this guy's content. I love learning from him. I love his experience, his business experience. But there are a few things I really have a struggle with with this guy. And one is that he has been on testosterone replacement therapy for almost four years now. And before this, he was on Clomid, which is a CERM, which is a selective estrogen reuptake modulator. And back when he was about 29 years old, he had testosterone in the 500s range, which isn't terrible. It's not great. But after getting on Clomid, he found that his testosterone went up to the 900s range. However, his estrogen was also way too high because when you get on CERMs, this tricks the body into acting on the estrogen receptors. And estrogen is an essential hormone to help with libido and erection quality. So CIRMs act like estrogen. They trick your body into thinking it's estrogen. And then your body's estrogen levels, like in the case with David, how to beast here are higher than they're supposed to be. And having estrogen too high and too low, both have a plethora of problems of their own. And there's been times where David's mentioned in his videos where he probably would be better off just being natural. And he kind of wishes that he just stayed that way because now he's in a cycle. He's in a cycle of hopping on all these exogenous hormones. And he's constantly chasing that, that next level, right? Once the hormones wear off, he needs to up the dose. Once his body adapts to those hormone levels, he's seeing that his results in the gym aren't the same. His recovery is not the same. And because he's already so far into it and his body isn't going to be able to naturally recover, he's going to have to continue to take these for the rest of his life. And on top of that, David also has a testosterone boosting supplement as part of his company. And this supplement is something that has Tonkatalee in it, which is a great herb for naturally boosting testosterone. However, he doesn't really do that himself. He's taking all of these exogenous hormones. And this is the part that's sad. 
for guys who watch his YouTube channels, who look up to his business advice, who look up to his wisdom, his healthy relationship with his wife, his family, and his ability to portray this so well and tell stories so well. I'm personally a huge fan of it as well, but it's sad to see younger guys really looking up to him and thinking that, oh, he's the way he is because of his supplement regimen, or he's the way he is because he takes this or does that. But the one thing I will give David credit for, he's completely transparent with everything that he's taking and doing on YouTube, which most YouTubers are not doing today. And that is something that I have to give him credit for. However, it's still very misleading that he has a testosterone boosting supplement trying to help boost testosterone naturally while also being on all these exogenous hormones, because we don't really know if that supplement even worked for him. He just hopped on the hormones and I feel bad for him because now he's going to have to try and have a child with his wife. And he may not be able to do that because of all these hormones that he's experimented with throughout his late twenties and early thirties. And I hope he does. I hope he is able to do that. And he has an amazing wife and I'm very, very hopeful that they're going to have an incredible family. But at the same time, it's still scary to be in that position. And even someone who has as much money and fame and financial success as him, he still has these feelings of not being enough, these feelings of having to take all of these exogenous hormones. And he's mentioned it multiple times where if he could go back in time, he probably would never have done it at all. And David's also played with things like HCG, which is human chorionic gonadotropin, which helps keep the testicle health intact. So you could still have children and also helps increase your testosterone. But this comes with side effects as well. And now he's not able to continue taking this because his resources of this are getting more and more restricted. This is a huge problem that guys are running into when they hop on these exogenous hormones. Once they rely on this, once their supply runs out or if their supply changes or if the laws change and they have to get different prescriptions, it becomes either more expensive or nearly impossible for them to actually be able to get all of these products. And that is another fear that a lot of these guys run into because if they're taking this and they're relying on this, if their supply suddenly stops, then their body is going to go into extreme havoc. And this is going to cause way more problems than any over-the-counter normal supplement can ever do. And now another person that I really empathize with here is Isaiah Miranda. Now this guy was 21 years old and his testosterone was at 21 nanograms per deciliter. That is not a joke. He literally tested it twice and it was at 21 nanograms per deciliter. Your grandmother probably has higher testosterone than this. Now this guy was not very transparent with what else he was taking, right? He could have had a traumatic incident to either his brain or his testicles that could cause this. But when they went through his blood work, they found that his LH and FSH or his luteinizing hormone, his follicle stimulating hormone were incredibly lower than they should have been. And this is a sign that either his body isn't stimulating and signaling the way it should be. But at the age of 21, this could either be from something as severe as a tumor or something like an exogenous hormone that he has been consuming because he wants to be a bodybuilder. And he was told that he should take this and it's going to help him grow muscle and look better. But what he didn't know is that this is going to have a huge side effect on his overall hormonal panel. And this poor guy had no libido. He had a lot of problems getting aroused and getting an erection. And he was only 21 years old. And now his body has gotten more damage than he could possibly undo, even at that young age. So this is what to look out for, especially if you're getting into the bodybuilding space at a young age like Isaiah did. And I feel so bad for him, man, because there's so many natural ways to increase testosterone. There's so many ways that you can take your health into your own hands and have the initiative. I mean, look at guys like me, Dr. Farhan, Mike Sager, Andre Bettinson. We took our health into our own hands. And this journey is definitely not easy, but it is very possible. And of course, we use things like natural herbs as well, but most of it is from our lifestyle. And some guys like, for example, Andre Bettinson was able to double their total testosterone. And guys like Dr. Farhan, who are even in their 30s and 40s, were still able to double their testosterone when they were told that as they age, their testosterone was going to decrease. And it wouldn't be complete if I didn't mention one of the guys who's always touting the importance of testosterone, and that is Andrew Tate. Now, there is a link to a video that Derek from More Plates, More Dates posted of some results that Andrew posted of his total and free testosterone, but this doesn't really look legit because the age difference is weird. And at the same time, it's in another language. But from the information we do have, we see that Andrew Tate's total testosterone is about 647 nanograms per deciliter. But then his free T is 43.55 picograms per milliliter. And this is a big red flag for Derek, as he mentions in his video, because this free T is way higher than what his total T is, which means he's probably on something or he's not completely transparent about what he's doing behind the scene. However, he's always touting to have this super high testosterone level, how testosterone is so important for men, blah, blah, blah. However, when he talks about this, he doesn't have transparency. He's very hesitant to show us his actual blood work. And he doesn't have to do this. But at the same time, for someone who's touting all of these incredible benefits of being a high T man, he himself hasn't really 
come forward with legit blood tests to show that his lifestyle has been able to provide him a high T naturally. And then one more fun one that I want to get into, someone that everybody knows, that everybody loves. This would be Donald Trump and his testosterone levels are actually decent for his age. However, there are many other men who are older than him who have testosterone levels way greater. And when he went on the Dr. Oz show in 2016, they found that his total testosterone was 441 nanograms per deciliter, which is pretty bad. But for someone with such high stress and for someone who's quite overweight, it's actually not terrible. Then if you look at someone like Mike Sager, someone in a similar age range, he has a 947 nanograms per deciliter testosterone. And he's also a great grandfather. So he definitely knows what he's doing. But when you look at this from Dr. Oz's perspective, Dr. Oz thinks that this is normal. Being 441 nanograms per deciliter is good. However, the problem here is not whether it's too high or too low. The problem here is that everyone thinks this is normal. People think that these testosterone levels are, are regular, right? And the problem with that is that we're seeing nowadays that men's testosterone levels are decreasing. Every single year, the average testosterone level decreases in men. And we don't really know why this is. I have a few ideas, a lot of things to do with the plastics, a lot of things to do with the lifestyles, the food, the diets, the sleep schedules. But at the same time, a lot of these men aren't fixing the problem. And I commend people like Donald Trump for not hopping on TRT because he very easily could. He definitely has the resources to do this, but he feels fine and he's just going to keep on doing his thing. He's got a little bit of an extra gut there, but that's just his style, right? However, if we go back to Dr. Farhan Kawaja, Andre Bettinson, Mike Sager, these guys have transformed their testosterone levels. Mike being a 72 year old with a 947 nanograms per deciliter testosterone. Just goes to prove that age is not going to hold you back from having a high natural testosterone. It's about putting in the consistent effort on a day to day basis in order to optimize your hormonal health. And I've heard from Mike personally, he does feel very good with everything you would associate with testosterone. For example, muscle recovery, and of course, being able to have a great relationship with his wife. And then there's Andre Bettinson, who has a 1,007 nanograms per deciliter total testosterone, as well as a 27.5 picograms per milliliter free testosterone. And this was doubled from his original testosterone levels. And if you look at the before and after photos of Andre, you can clearly see this transformation from a skinny fat soy boy to now a giga chad pog daddy who is very focused on optimizing his health, diet, and fitness while being able to eat eat and enjoy the foods that he actually likes and enjoy the exercise that he does on a day-to-day -day basis. But another very interesting story is from Dr. Farhan Kawaja, who had a 376 nanogram per deciliter total testosterone. And this is the testosterone of an 80-year-old man as well. He was in his early 30s. Then in his 40s, he found that he had an 801 nanogram per deciliter total testosterone. So he doubled his testosterone from the ages of 30s to 40s. Most men feel like it's the opposite. Most men feel like once they hit 30, their testosterone level starts decreasing year after year. But this isn't the truth. It isn't that it just happens naturally. It's the lifestyle changes that happen after this age that causes testosterone levels to naturally decline. It's not going to just happen if you take care of yourself. If you do the right things, take the right herbs and provide your body with the right framework it needs in order to build those hormones naturally, endogenously. And then there's my own personal journey. My highest testosterone levels have gotten up to 1,293 nanograms per deciliter. And my free testosterone has gotten up to 285.4 picograms per milliliter. Now, when I first got my testosterone levels tested back in 2018, I had a pretty high testosterone of over a thousand already, but my free testosterone was struggling. And this was due to a huge sex hormone bonding globulin level. And the reason why I believe it was so high is because I was fasting so much. I would do intermittent fasting. I would do three, four, five day fasts where I just wouldn't eat. I would just drink water. And I did this because I was trying to heal my gut, but this tanked my free testosterone. And now I was was able to actually 3x my free testosterone because I started incorporating more food, more meal times. I stopped fasting and I was able to naturally triple my free testosterone levels. And this was back when I was in my early 20s to being now almost in my 30s. I have been able to actually increase it, whereas all the common doctors today have said that testosterone levels should be decreasing and the testosterone levels of an 18, 19, 20, 21 year old man is going to be your peak. And then as you get older, it's going to start to decrease. However, that is not the truth for guys like myself, Mike Sager, Andre Bettinson, and Dr. Farhan. So showing testosterone levels are actually the best marker of what the person is preaching. If they're able to improve their blood work, they're able to actually show a transformation regardless of their age, regardless of all the other factors. Those are the ones you should actually listen to. Those are the people who actually have the insights in order to help you achieve your goals in that field as well. But the unfortunate thing today is I see so many guys getting into these, these holes of, oh, this guy has this product, this guy has this course, but they don't know if 
these guys actually transform. They just see the body on the screen. They see how the guy looks with his shirt off, and that's all they're basing their judgment on. When in reality, they need to look at a more scientific level. They need to know if they do what this guy's doing, will I be able to improve my health and my testosterone and my other hormones naturally? Or is this just going to be another thing that is not going to work for me? Because it's like this. Would you take business advice from a guy who's broke? Or would you take business advice from a guy who has successful businesses? So then why would you take hormonal advice from health experts who either don't show you their hormonal panels, don't have a hormonal panel transformation, or are promoting taking exogenous things that your body would have to adapt to that aren't actually going to improve your body's natural ability. These are all external. These are all pharmaceutical applications, which do have their place. There are plenty of reasons for people to take these, but they're very extreme. Think about trauma. Think about getting hit in different areas in the brain or in your manly region or having something like a pituitary gland tumor, which cuts off the luteinizing hormone and follicle stimulating hormone to your testes. And don't take it from me. Look at this graph here comparing all the different testosterone levels I just mentioned. Look at the guys at the low end and look at the guys at the high end. The guys on the low end are the ones who seem to be talking the most about their testosterone, the ones who are talking the most about how they can help you or they have the supplement or the course that's best for you. However, they themselves aren't able to improve their own experiences. They're not able to improve their own health. And then there's guys on the higher end who have been able to improve their own health, but they're preaching to you this natural product or this natural course when they just injected pharmaceuticals into their body in order to get those levels to where they are. And the problem with those guys is now they have a whole myriad of different health problems and health issues that they have to risk because of those choices that they made, most of which are irreversible. So remember, it's important to learn about the people you are taking advice from, whether it be business advice, financial advice, marriage advice, faith advice, and of course, health advice. You have to learn about their own personal journey. And if they're sharing something with you because it makes sense, or they're just trying to trick you and make you do something that they actually themselves have not been able to gain any benefit from. So let me know in the comments what kind of experiences you've had in your health journey, what things you've tried, what guys you trust, what guys you don't trust, and what you think about the guys I mentioned above. And of course, as always, like and subscribe for your health.